What's up, everybody? It's easy. It's true gaming. Bring you a brand new video. How how to win clutch wars? We just came up with a huge win. Win two hundred and one. So now I'm an expert on how to win clutch wars. Just for the record. <laughs> First attack here. But this is a, this is a recap video. Got three or four really good attacks to show you. And then towards the end of the video. I'll, I'll kind of break down the scenario of, of what was happening in the war and how we pulled it out right there at the end. And um, if you can have, if these circumstances happen to you, I can almost guarantee that you win. If you just, if these circumstances happen for you, so and we'll go over that a little later, and you'll see what I mean. So first attack is Michael Man. Two accounts in the in this war. He has Michael Man and Hero. I think he got a 12 pack total. Just aw he has really. Um, he's really done well with the with the slap both of his accounts. He's got level 2 bowlers So he's able to use a slap really effectively on both both accounts So uh, walking across this base, it's not not quite maxed out on defense But if you see those walls, he's got a lot of max town hall 10 uh, walls It's looking like they were tampering with the base weight a little bit And I don't know if you're seeing this in your clan, but we're seeing a lot of it. We, we're seeing a lot of the defenses are Town Hall 8 or Town Hall 9, but they're upgrading the walls. Someone must have missed the memo. Those walls count too. So they ended up being number 10 in the lineup. And, well, Mike's number 8. So, I mean, it's a pretty even match, I guess. But I would really suggest that if you're going to max out parts of your base, max out the defenses too. Uh... Eventually Supercell is going to get it all right and we're, And the matchmaking in, in clan wars is going to be leveled out completely So if you're one of those clans that have tons of engineered bases There's going to be a day where it's going to hurt you more than help you Maybe right now it's going to help but eventually it's not So this base was I guess it's kind of in the anti-3 fashion where it's a it's it's pretty big stretched out There wasn't a lot of different compartments though. So Even though they had all those high-level walls There really wasn't that many different walls to break through I believe he used a couple jump spells to get over two of the walls and he had to break through one wall And it was not one of those uh, max ten, town hall 10 walls so he was all I wish I could count how many walls he's maxed out at three million apiece, just so they could break through a, a, one of those uh, Town Hall Nine walls for the win. <laughs> Great attack. Next up, uh, this is a Dragaloon from from Creeper. It's actually Stick and Go, which is one of Creeper's accounts, and uh, Creeper does this Dragaloon attack on all accounts, and he just he hammers it I you know I, I've heard from a, a lot of other players that are in in big clans like ours and they've been using this uh, this Dragaloon in Town Hall 10 and in, in Town Hall 9 and it's pretty it's been pretty effective even in Town Hall 10 now Creeper's been using this ever since Town Hall 8 you know Dragaloon is really a strong Town Hall 8 attack but once you get into Town Hall 9, it's a lot harder. They have the fourth air defense, and you can max out those air defenses in Town Hall 9. And they're not maxed out for the air defense, but a max Town Hall 9 air defense is is tough to take down with dragons. They just they hammer the dragons down. So you have to be really careful on the deployment of the dragons. You have to make sure you funnel a, a large group of them into the core of the base, and you have to and you have to you have to bring at least one lava hound and it looks to me well, this is the second time I've seen this attack it looks to me like they actually left a hole behind the wall somewhere and he was able to spawn balloons from inside the inside the actual base which that did help out a lot and that's just taking advantage of uh, of a problem with the base and you know if you ever see any weaknesses in the base you have to exploit it <laughs> it's kind of the way the game is so this is kind of, I, I call this base like a, a Jake base. This is one of those, uh, it's not really an island base, but kind of is. You know, it's not a, not, a, not a huge fan of this base style in war because you really want to force the your opponent to break through a bunch of different walls. And there's just not, none of that here. And of course with the Dragaloon attack, the walls aren't really relevant anyway. But uh, you, you really want 
you want to force the attacking player to go through four or five sets of walls because then they won't have enough spells to cover every single wall if you only have two or three sets of walls like in this case here the core could have been accessed with one jump spell so you can and if you bring the second jump spell you can jump out of the core so they don't get stuck in that double set of walls in the back side of it so for two jump spells which a town hall nine can afford two jump spells um, you've just pretty much given up the base you don't want to do that so base design is really important especially once you get down to town hall nine and town hall ten and town hall eleven of course but you have to be mindful of these base designs because we're, we're seeing a lot of this we're seeing a lot of these uh, I, I think I think I know what's happening I think players because I've done it I was guilty of it uh, when I first started I wanted to know okay I, I want to make a strong base so I want to look at the number one guy in the world and see what he's building and I'd look at the number one guy and I'd build something similar to what he has even though I didn't have all the walls he did and all the defenses I'd make it look similar but it just doesn't work for a Town Hall 9. You can't build a Town Hall 11 style base in Town Hall 9 and have it work. It's just, it, it, that's not the way, it, you don't have the Eagle, you don't have the uh, Inferno Tower, so you just, it just doesn't work out. So, this is Hero, this is Michael Man's second attack. It's another slap attack. And with this attack, he funnels the troops. He does a great job of funneling the troops into the core of the base. And I think within 30 seconds, um, we're having rocks hit the back end of the base so he gets through this whole base in like 45 seconds uh, it starts to fizzle out a little bit at the, at the very end but he's got a bunch of troops coming around the bottom side of the base he's got one two three four or five witches and you know once you have witches going around the outside like that uh, they're spawning those skeletons the skeletons are running out in front they're distracting the defenses and the, the, the witches themselves can shoot over the walls at those outer defenses and uh, it's it's just a it's a very potent uh, a very potent attack from the outside, the witches. And what I'm seeing a lot of players do is they will put three witches in one corner and then three witches in the opposite corner. So let's just say the bottom right hand wall or the, the you know the southeast wall. Uh, they'll put three witches in the south part and then they'll put three more witches in the in the northern part of that wall. And then they'll put one or two bowlers with it, and maybe even a wizard with it. And, and in that case, you don't even need the healers. And they manage to spawn enough skeletons to keep all the defenses off them, and they'll pretty much live to the back side of the base. So these witches, they, they've fixed them with the last couple updates. They're not, they're not really overpowered as far as you can't put in 30 witches and just let them go at it. I don't know if you can anyway, but uh, <laughs> with the numbers allowed. Now this, this attack here, uh, Creeper... I think he was had four accounts, maybe five accounts. He's got a bunch of accounts in the clan, and he'll use several of them depending on what we need in the war. Well, he three-starred with every single account on every attack, but maybe one or two. So this is just another one. Of, this is another slap, and I just wanted to show in fact, and this is in times four, just how how well these troops just plowed through that base. It, it was just a, a big line of troops plowing through. So now we're getting towards the end of the war. And uh, we're down by one, and we have two attacks left. And this is what, and this is another slap attack. Uh, we use it a lot in Town Hall 10. We use it, a, we use a, a version of it in Town Hall 9. We use it in Town Hall 11. Town Hall 9, 10, and 11. This is an effective attack. This is, uh, you, you have a 50 50 shot at three starring with this in Town Hall 9, and probably 60 40 in Town Hall 10 if done well. You have an even better shot of it in Town Hall 10 than Town Hall 9, believe it or not, because you can use more bowlers. So getting back to it, the title of the video is How to Win These Clutch Wars. We were down by one star, and we had about 10 minutes left in the war. They had one attack left. We had two attacks left. We had my attack, and we had this attack right here. Now, I'm going to show you after this attack is over how many times we attacked this damn base before we finally three-started with the Town Hall 10. So we did a dip attack. I know it's the Town Hall 10 that you see there, but this is actually a, a 9.5. And then the next base, we must have attacked 10 times too. They were just great designs for Town Hall 9, and our 9s, had a, they really struggled trying to 3-star it. So we attacked it several times. We couldn't do it. We kept on getting really close. We got a 99%. We got a 98%. Problem was, was that they had us beat on percentage, and they had their one of their best players still had an attack left. 
and he three st I believe he three starred my main account, which was number four in the in the war, and we had five or six bases below that that we knew he could easily three star, and they were ahead on percentage, so we were in a lot of trouble. So this happens a lot. This happens in a lot of wars. We see clans quit in this case. We see them, they, they don't use their attacks. We used all of our attacks and we literally waited to the very last minute to do our last attack. And right here I'm scrolling. I just wanted to show everyone how many times we attacked these bases. This is, this is a tenacity. <laughs> uh, we were just doing everything we could to try to get this one. If we just got one more star, then we would not have had to sweat it out to the very last attack. And uh, I was going into the last attack because Creeper was able to three star. He tied up the war. We were down by three percent on damage, and every base that that they ha that I could attack had already been two starred. So we could only get one star. They could only get one star. But if they got one star, and we get one star, they win on percentage. Uh, so you know we were in a little trouble with that. So what we did is we waited and we waited and we waited. And I attacked, I think, with seven or eight seconds left in the war, which is by design. If I wasn't the one attacking, someone was going to do that. And now we don't know exactly what they were thinking or what they were doing because they never attacked. We actually won, and they had their best player with one attack left in the bank. They used all, every attack in their entire clan except for the winning attack. And it was baffling to us. Now this was a China clan. This was this attack was going on. It was probably three o'clock in the morning there, so that may have been a contributor. They may have they may have been asleep, but I just I'm I'm thinking more on the lines that they knew they had the win and they they weren't going to attack if I wasn't going to attack. I guess they were being stingy or trying to be frugal with their attacks and they didn't want to spend whatever it was for the last army to go in. So then when I attacked with literally seven seconds left. They didn't have time to attack, and that that could be a possible scenario. I don't know if you've ever tried to attack in the last five seconds, but there's still time on the clock. You have five seconds left in the war, but it won't let you because they there's like a buffer in the very very end of the in the war where they won't let you attack in the last five or ten seconds. So managed to get the attack in. Uh, I'm using a town hall ten on a town hall nine, a dip attack. Uh, whenever you are attacking a Town Hall 9 with a Town Hall 10 and you're using ground troops, use the third jump spell because you don't have to use freeze. And so that third jump spell made it easy for me to maneuver through that base. So we win. Close, close, close war. I don't know if, I, again, I don't know why they didn't attack, but they didn't. And so how do you win these clutch wars? It's, it's real simple. Use every attack. Save your best attacks till the very end. And attack in the last few seconds because they may fall asleep on you or they may not just they, they just may not attack <laughs> so kind of left with a couple questions at the end of the war but left with a war win and that's what it really comes down to so appreciate you guys for watching if you haven't subbed to the channel yet sub to the channel for me like the video if you like the video until next time it's been easy take care everybody Hey guys, it's easy again. Just wanted to let everyone know that we have probably the largest guide in all of Clash. It's coming out in July 2017. It's called Clash Made Easy. And it's impressive. We're just finishing up the Builder Base update. And as soon as we we're done with it, we will have it live. I'll have more information in later videos. So just a heads up. I think it's better than the wiki. I think it's better than anything else out there. So you're going to have to come and check it out. The address, one more time, www.clashmadeeasy.com.